Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Let's get after it. The return of the Anunnaki, the greatest leak of the Pentagon secrets. It is believed that the Anunnaki were the creators of man. These powerful gods left Earth in the distant past, saying that someday, they would return. Interestingly, if you look at ancient cultures around the world, most of the creator gods left Earth and promised to return someday. According to certain researchers and authors, the Anunnaki must return to Earth to fix what they had done wrong, in order to accelerate a spiritual awakening and the evolution of human consciousness. The Anunnaki could return to Earth, according to a recent interview with Stan Deo, who said that NASA and the Pentagon believe that the Anunnaki will return with the arrival of the planet Nibiru. But wait a minute, Nibiru, the Anunnaki and all these things really exist? In Sumerian mythology, the Anunnaki were a group of good and bad gods and goddesses who came to Earth and eventually created the human race. The existence of the ancient extraterrestrial civilization, the Anunnaki who came to Earth in the distant past, has long been disputed by researchers. However, their existence and their arrival on planet Earth is well documented in many ancient texts that the history has completely ignored according to numerous authors from around the world. Interestingly, there are certain African cultures that believe that extraterrestrial beings have been visiting Earth for tens of thousands of years. For example, the Zulu legends speak of a time when star visitors came to dig gold and others natural resources. These mines were worked by slaves created by the first people. According to some sources and interpretations, these gods came from Nibiru. The Assyrians and the Babylonians called the planet Marduk. The Sumerians said that one year on the planet Nibiru, ASAR, is equivalent to 3,600 years on Earth. According to the Washington Post, a celestial body possibly as large as the giant planet Jupiter and possibly so close to Earth and that could be part of this solar system has been found in the direction of the Orion constellation by a telescope in orbit aboard a U.S. infrared astronomical satellite. All I can tell you is that we do not know what it is, said Jerry Neugebauer, senior IRAs scientist. R. Harrington wrote a very interesting article in the Astronomical Journal in 1988. Harrington suggested that there was a planet three or four times the size of Earth, and that it was in a position three or four times farther from the Sun than Pluto. According to the mathematical models presented, it is believed that planet X or Nibiru has an extremely elliptical orbit of 30 degrees. In 2008, Japanese researchers announced that according to their calculations, there should be an undiscovered planet at a distance of approximately 100 astronomical units, astronomical units, that is up to two-thirds the size of planet Earth. Many would say that the above suggests that a planet like Nibiru can exist. It is believed that the average life expectancy of the Anunnaki was 120 SARS, which is 120 by 3,600 or 432,000 years according to ancient texts. The list of the Sumerian kings is perhaps one of the most important ancient texts that perfectly describes a moment in history in which, literally, the gods ruled for thousands of years. After the rain descended from heaven, the rain was at Eridic. In Eridic, Elulam became king, he ruled for 28,800 years. Alaliar ruled for 36,000 years. Second kings, they ruled for 64,800 years. One of the most interesting details about the list of the Sumerian kings is the fact that the oldest list describes eight kings who ruled the earth for a total of 241,200 years, since the original royalty had descended from heaven, until the moment of that great flood, that swept the earth and once again, the rain was taken down from heaven after the flood. With as many different cultures as there are that depict some form of the Anunnaki, it's got to at least pique your interest. It's got to at least make you question whether or not there's something to it. It's uh, pretty crazy to think that all these different cultures were inventing science fiction at the same time and came up with the same story. The world ended in 2012. Many people theorize that the world ended in 2012, and that we are all just living in our consciousness in a dreamlike state. This theory is backed up by the fact that Stephen Hawking, a world-renowned physicist and cosmologist stated that if we theoretically discover the God Particle the world could end in an instant. Well in fact we already did find the God Particle in 2012. And many people speculate that the world has already ended. That would explain why the world hasn't felt the same since 2012. And in fact 2012 was just a bizarre year. Other things that back up this theory is the Mandela Effect. Many people say that things from 2012 seem different nowadays. And that would be explained by the Mandela Effect. Or what about the deja vu feeling? Many people randomly get this feeling that they've been here before, that they've been in a certain situation before, even though they haven't. 
Could this be our consciousness trying to wake us up from a dreamlike state or give us a sign? What do you think happened in 2012? I'm definitely on board with the whole CERN super collider creating the Mandela effect theory. I'm on board with it just because it's fun and it doesn't really have any major impact. It's not like if it's if it's not the cause of it, if the Mandela effect is just a global phenomenon that's not really something happening. And it literally is just a collectively shared wrong memory or group of wrong memories. It's not hurting nothing. It's just fun to talk about, fun to speculate on. I do have a theory that I'd like to share on deja vu because I've had some serious deja vu in my life, as I'm sure a lot of you have. And so I have this theory that all time is happening all at once. We just perceive it linearly. It's the way our minds work. So because everything's happening all at once, sometimes whenever you're asleep, your subconscious can pick up things that are happening from different times, but it doesn't pick up all of it. It just picks up enough information to make you realize later on down the road, hey, I've experienced this before in some shape, fashion, or form. But usually the ending will play out different or there'll be some detail that's different because your brain didn't get all the details right. It didn't pick up the full memory. So it's like deja vu is you getting a future memory while you're asleep. And then years later, you're like, oh yeah, I remember this, that this thing that never happened. It's pretty interesting. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, I make a new one just like it every single day. It would be awesome if you'd hit that subscribe button and come back tomorrow to join me. In 1936, Edgar Cayce predicted that the world would undergo a pole shift between 16 and 20 degrees. And this would happen when both Mount Etna in Italy and Mount Pelee in Martinique erupt together. And when that happens, we'll have 90 days to evacuate the coastlines. Are those volcanoes still active? Oh, they are. Mount Etna just erupted a few months ago, and scientists at Mount Pelee said that the seismic activity there is above baseline. No, no. Now, if the poles do shift, as Edgar Cayce predicts, the world map is going to look very different. Africa will be divided into three parts. The Nile will widen and a brand new waterway will split the continent. As the Red Sea grows, Cairo will eventually disappear into the sea. Asia is already very seismic and will suffer the most dramatic changes. Land will be covered from the Philippines to Japan by the ocean. As the Pacific plate shifts, the islands of Japan will sink, leaving only a few small islands. Taiwan and most of Korea will be completely lost to the sea. The entire coast of China will be pushed inland hundreds of miles. The population of India will be told not to seek higher ground within the interior of the country due to buckling of the land. Instead, they will have to head to the Himalayas. The high mountains of Tibet and Nepal will provide refuge. Antarctica will no longer be covered in ice, but will once again become fertile and green. Australia will lose nearly 25% of its land due to coastal flooding. The Adelaide area will become a new sea. The Simpson and Gibson deserts will become fertile farming land. New Zealand will actually grow in size and will once again connect to mainland Australia. And New Zealand will ultimately become one of the safest areas in the New World. Lucky Kiwis. Europe will suffer. Most of Northern Europe will simply be gone, sunk into the sea, as the tectonic plate underneath it collapses. Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark disappear, eventually becoming hundreds of small islands. Most of the UK, from Scotland to the English Channel, will disappear into the ocean, but several small islands will remain. London and Birmingham will actually survive, but not as cities, as islands. Ireland will disappear completely except for land at high elevation. Russia will be separated from Europe by an entirely new sea when the Caspian, Black, Kara, and Baltic seas combine. The new sea will stretch all the way to Siberia. Russia's climate will remain intact, leaving Russia to supply most of Europe's food. Putin is going to be king of the world! You mean he isn't already? You make a good point. In Canada, most of the coastline will be pushed in by 200 miles. Regions in Quebec, Ontario, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and areas of Alberta will become the refugee survival center of Canada. As the North American plate buckles, the new islands of California will be created with almost 150 separate islands. The West Coast will recede east toward Nebraska, Wyoming, and Colorado. The Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence will join and continue from the Mississippi River all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. All coastal areas from Maine to Florida will be taken over by water and pushed inland for miles. Most of the coastal areas of Mexico will be flooded. The California Baja Coast will ultimately become a series of islands. Billions of people will be displaced by this cataclysm. Billions more will be killed. Well, 
That was cheerful. Sorry about that. When is this pole shift supposed to happen? Well, Casey said 1998. Oh, we're fine. Yeah, but NASA has detected a slight pole shift that could be a concern. When did they detect the shift? 1998. Yeah, damn it! I'm sitting right here on a fault line in western Kentucky, and it's been expected to go off like it's past due over 100 years. And whenever it does, it's going to wipe out. It's going to wipe out everything from land between the lakes all the way over to the farthest uh, western side of the state, and it's going to take out Memphis and all that. So already got that to worry about but then looking at these maps it's showing i'm right on the edge of where all this new uh oceanfront property is going to be so i'm either going to sink or my property value is going to go up tremendously fingers crossed this is where it gets really freaky i got goosebumps i'm scared bro <laughs> from albert einstein it says i'm not sure which weapons the third world war will be fought but the fourth world war they will fight with sticks and stone day one of ai taking over it was contained to its own server the ai figured out with like a roomba vacuum that's the only thing it could figure out how to connect to so it put all of its information onto the roomba computer and then that allowed it to connect to the Wi-Fi, which allowed it to connect to everyone's phones. And then it spread instantly. It was in control of 3D printers to build itself with no one knowing until the one time, 40 days into it, it decided, yep, I don't want humans anymore. Dude. It like went into this whole thing to where shut down the power plants, it messed with Wall Street, like just chaos. Developed its own killing drones oh. to survey all of Earth. Like if a human was found, it would kill it. And he's like, obviously the story is made up. Yeah. He said, the story was made up by AI when I asked it to make up a story of how it would take over. Just a hypothetical. <laughs> Are you doing okay? <laughs> Why do they keep asking an AI, how do you intend to take over us? Because it's not going to give you an accurate depiction. All you're doing is helping it come up with different ideas and theories. Don't even give it the idea. Ask it better things like, what are you going to do to help humanity? Ask it stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, people dress up as Genghis Khan for Halloween. They don't oh, think yeah. anything of it. Yeah, and that guy, that guy killed the most people. The most people ever. The most. Well, did he kill more than uh, Mao? He killed somewhere between 50 and 70 million people during his lifetime. Okay. So much that it changed the carbon footprint of Earth. <laughs> so they do core samples, and they go during the time of the life of Genghis Khan. You will find less carbon on Earth. He killed 10 percent of the world's population. Dude, they killed an entire city in Jin, China, and stacked the bones so high that the Quar of Sh Charisma, when he, the, the Shah of Charisma, when they sent an emissary to go to visit Jin, China, they thought it was a snow-capped mountain. And as they got closer, they had abandoned the roads because there were so many bodies rotting in the roads that their wheels were getting stuck in the mud of decaying bodies. And then when they probably finally got to the city, they realized that thing that they thought was a snow-capped mount was a pile of bones. Maybe that explains what happens to the Tartarians. Maybe Genghis Khan killed them all. <laughs> you know the big one that's going on right now. All these stadium shows right now mm -hmm. are satanic rituals. And, because this is interesting, because you'd have to speak on this, yeah. that Taylor Swift is the daughter of Anton LaVey. Do you know the mother? I don't know the mother. I don't know Anton. Look up LaVey. Anton LaVey was basically the head of... Church of Saint... Uh, yeah. Uh, but his yeah, which... his chick is a pretty much a carbon copy of Taylor. Taylor Swift's like the more beautiful version. Wow. But the ritual thing is pretty fascinating. They do a conjuring ceremony. The deepest conspiracy is that the energy, if you believe in energy, which I do, the people are helping fulfill it. I think there is something inherently spiritual about concerts. Yes. I think when you've got thousands upon thousands of people yes. pouring their energy to one person, I think it. I think it is a spiritual experience. If you're not watching Jamie Kennedy's podcast on YouTube, you should check it out. Uh, I really like the direction that he's going in. For one thing, yes, Taylor Swift does look like Anton LaVey's daughter, very much so, but she's not her. That's ridiculous. It's just a creepy coincidence, but they are dead on the nose with all this uh, satanic worship at concerts and stuff. There's clearly some rituals taking place at some of these concerts, and 
all of these audience members are just cannon fodder for their rituals. Has alien life ever observed us? Well, by observed, you mean could they just turn a big telescope in our direction and gather some radio waves? You know, because frankly, we've only been generating radio waves for the last 70 years, so it's only a 70 light year ball around us, and within that small radius, very unlikely that there's been some alien world that's examining us. So it would have to be something that would be able to recognize our signal and visit us. Right. But don't we look at observable planets and solar systems and discover Goldilocks planets? We do. And we examine those planets from vast distances away. Yes. And wouldn't you assume that a, a life form that is perhaps thousands of years more advanced than us with the exponential increase in yes. technology, I mean, if they ever got to the point where we are, that they would see these Goldilocks planets as well and recognize that Earth is one of them? Yes. However, if they are so far away, they're going to be examining Earth as it was hmm, hundreds right. of thousands or millions or billions right. of years ago. Right. So if you truly want them to be examining us in the sense of human presence on planet Earth, then it's a much more difficult proposition to imagine that they've actually been doing this. This just makes me think even more that it's our government that's flying all these UFOs and stuff around and that we don't actually have captured alien craft and all this stuff. And it's just our government with advanced technology that we're not aware of that they're fixing to use against us. I'll map the moon. He mapped the landing spot for the Apollo mission. He's the expert on the moon. I said, is there really something on the backside of the moon? He looked at me and he said, there are buildings up there, big ones, and we didn't build them. And they're ancient. 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 Didn't wow. he say the buildings look like mushrooms? Some of them said, do you think that it landed by chance in the perfect spot where it eclipses the sun and it doesn't ever change its face to the earth. It stays locked in a position. He said none of that was by accident. You can argue with me in the comments on this one, but I'm still not convinced that we ever landed on the moon. So as far as I'm concerned, all of that's nonsense. I'm open into listening to anything. May find something in one of these videos that convinces me that we did land on the moon, and then I'll be much more open to other things. But as of right now, I consider all that to be garbage. People used to use liquor to run their cars. Most people don't know that in the 1910s and 1920s, people used to run their cars off of moonshine. Why do you think they had the prohibition where they banned alcohol? Because you can't have people running their cars on alcohol. You need them running their cars on petroleum because every person at that time was very self-sufficient self-sustainable they were producing their own moonshine and they could use that to run it with their car so they had to get a band then they started outlawing it and arresting people and doing all those things and saying all that it's all the goods prohibition crime and all these pe these people are out of control out of control that was the whole thing they're totally out of control they're being too self-sufficient so they had to come down in that with the hammer and start arresting all those people. And then all the people who had engines that ran on moonshine, guess what? They went out of business. Because if they can't run their engines on moonshine anymore, they don't have any more customers. So you eliminate all those people and you move all the rest of petroleum. And the Rockefeller just come in there and they just take over. And this is how the monopolies, the monopolies of America and all over the world, take over. They eliminate anybody who competes against them so that they can bring in and take over the control. This guy usually comes across to me as a looney tune, but his uh, theory here that the government started prohibition because people were driving their cars off of homemade fuel, man, I could definitely see that taking place. But to my understanding, people didn't start doing that until prohibition. They were running their cars off of alcohol so that they could avoid detection whenever they were delivering it let me know down in the comments if you're aware were people doing that before prohibition running their cars off of uh moonshine abilities of our nationally kept secrets um would shatter most people's imagination of what is possible this is probably one of the more well-known black budget time travel projects with the exception of the Montauk Project. Many whistleblowers have said that the program was not actually shut down, but just classified into deep 
black. The people that know everything about Looking Glass, that have gotten all the reports and all the information, the elites of the world, probably figured out that that was the end of the game. I mean, nothing could be manipulated beyond that point. According to the alleged insiders, the Looking Glass technology was apparently used to look backward and forward in time, using the consciousness of an operator as a type of steering mechanism. The operator would sit in a chair that was apparently recovered from a downed extraterrestrial craft capable of interfacing with consciousness directly. When the device was turned on, strong toroidal fields of energy cycled about a pouch of water at the center, which acted as a sort of resonator for in-streaming energies from the point of focus maintained by the operator. The data was collected and projected onto video monitors at incredible speeds, which later needed to be de-interlaced to reveal discernible images. What's interesting is that the biases of the operator would have a direct effect on the images collected. For example, if one were to look back to the time of Jesus' crucifixion, if the person doing so was an atheist, they may not see anything at all. But if the person was a Christian, they may see the infamous crucifixion event. This is suggestive of a time-space mechanic in the universe, wherein the human mind is able to navigate through time itself. The work of Dewey B. Larson and his reciprocal systems theory provides the basis for this interpretation. Briefly, as described by Larson, the universe is broken up into two physical regions, as defined by motion. Below the speed of light, motion operates in three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. Above the speed of light, motion operates in one dimension of space and three dimensions of time. As bizarre as that sounds, the mind is uniquely equipped to navigate in time, which is able to access memories of the past gain awareness of events in the present, conceive of future possibilities, and even imagine alternative events that did not actually happen. In other words, the human mind can select a point of focus, just like in remote viewing, and receive the information from the store of memories made during the experience. Do you know the difference between looking glass and the yellow cube? Yes. Okay. Are you aware of what happened to the yellow cube? and how it was used, and, um, and so on. Are you I, I believe that the yellow cube still exists. I can't say for certain if it's on this planet, but I would say that it's definitely protected from use at this point. Okay, well that coincides with the testimony we got. The yellow cube or the yellow book would give you your possible future. Yes. So it took basically the choices that you would inherently make along a timeline and tell you what that timeline would be given that you made all the choices that your brain would make. Well, this is exactly what I was just going to ask you. What we were told is that leaders of, of governments and so on, people in high uh, places, uh, you know, uh, politically, would, would use this to try to see their most optimum future and then follow those, those so they were using it to enhance their wealth, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. yeah. in a very egotistical way. Um, and that was part of the problem with it. The looking glass device seems to be capable of the same type of process. To access a data stream from any conceivable location in space or time, steered via the consciousness of an operator. According to the testimony of Burish, the technology was provided to the human race during the Sumerian times, when an advanced contingent of future humans went back in time and provided that civilization assistance after a cataclysm known as the Deluge. The Sumerian cylinder seals were encoded with plans to build the looking glass device. Earlier versions of the project saw the development of an actual portal that an individual could move through to jump in time. According to Burish, accounts provided by captured beings known in the program as P-45s, future humans 45,000 years into the future, the Earth was destroyed by massive cataclysms around the year 2012. This is apparently because looking glass devices were actively being used during a major celestial alignment, which overloaded the organic energy grid of the planet. 
Burish further claims that the device has been dismantled as a result of discovering two probable timelines, one of which is the cataclysm described by the captured being. An attempt was made to look into the future, but no concrete data was able to be received past the infamous date of December 21st, 2012, suggesting that this date is a nexus point in time, whereby either Timeline 1 or Timeline 2 would gain momentum. In the last report, Burish suggested that Timeline 1, the positive timeline, had an over 80% likelihood of coming to fruition. Given that we are nearly a decade beyond the 2012 date, and no major cataclysms have occurred, we are most likely well entrenched within the positive timeline. This is undoubtedly one of the more intriguing topics in Awakening Times, which seems to be well hidden in popular works of fiction. Corey Good, a secret space program insider, claims to have reviewed documentation relating to this project. It would be very hard to accept that all of this information that, that is currently held secret and classified. I think we're just going to need more evidence of this uh, whistleblower testimony on something this far-fetched sounding. It's just too difficult to believe, too difficult to put any weight into. I do like the way that we're talking about how the mind works, though, because that kind of goes along with my theory on deja vu that I was speaking on. So I found that pretty interesting. Less than 18 hours after Tesla's death in 1943, the FBI revealed one of his top secret projects. Quickly, agents went to collect Tesla's papers, over 10,000 designs and notes, and kept them in a super safe government spot. In 2020, when the secrets were not so secret anymore, the FBI let out a bit of this info in a PDF of Tesla's 53-page diary. On page seven, Tesla wrote about an invention he said to keep secret until the year 2300. It's a small device, like a clock with a pendulum that can change the frequency of how things naturally shake. He demonstrated its power by inducing extreme vibrachones within a New York skyscraper using resonant frequency, almost causing its total collapse in just 10 minutes. Through this, Tesla theorized that all matter is composed of ambient oscillations that, once synchronized, could destabilize solid entities down to their atomic structure. To keep the world safe from bad guys, Tesla got rid of the machine himself. He figured out that the brain vibrates at 369 hertz and the whole human body at 396 hertz. Even though the FBI tried to hide the vibration speed for the whole Earth and universe, you can still make it out as 963639 hertz. This one sounds somewhat believable to me, just because I'm, I'm so convinced that frequency technology was a thing in the past. Tesla seemed to be pretty obsessed with frequencies. And it also makes sense to me that if we're just a, a collective group of atoms put together, that those atoms could be separated. Because if, if that's uh, the building block of everything, why can't it be structurally deconstructed? It makes sense that there's got to be a way to do it. It's kind of gross and kind of terrifying to think that there could be a weapon that could be used like that. One of the people that I met in Arkansas, his son-in-law is a mechanic, and they sent him the specs and the, the components. He built the thing in his shop. It took him five hours to retrofit an internal combustion engine. He sends back to his uncle, says, well, I don't know how it worked, but I hooked it up and it worked. And he put the gas analyzer there in the exhaust pipe and saw for himself. They turned the technology on and within about a minute, instead of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrous oxide, methane, and other hydrocarbons coming out, they've all gone down to just a small percentage. Some of them we've even zeroed out. And what's coming out is like 20% oxygen. Optimum atmospheric levels of oxygen that you would be breathing in a pristine, unpolluted, natural environment. That's what's coming out of the exhaust. Wow. George George got down, and we're joking about how George Howard was huffing the plasmoids. Yeah. Wow, man. I think this guy's name is Randall Carlson. He was on Rogan's podcast once talking about uh, all of this ancient technology that they were trying to recreate so that they could make these essentially high-frequency generators that you could put around like an electric generator and he was talking about it was increasing the efficiency of the generator by like 70 percent just by putting this box around it that would bounce the frequencies of the generator back at a different frequency really fascinating stuff he's definitely somebody to look into if you're interested in that sort of thing watch what this guy had to say about the military hiding giants the nephilim in military bases underground watch this 
and Greg Renrich, that was one of the things that he told me. Uh, he's the one that was uh, talking about seeing the, the Giants in the deep underground military bases. He said that one of the first things that they had to do before he was allowed to go into S-4 or S-20 or any of the others, they made him sign an affidavit saying, you're not allowed to use the name Jesus Christ in these underground facilities, not even if you stub your toe or anything. And he said that he saw 10 to 25 foot tall giants in these underground bases and said that they were, you know, the human scientists and other people working side by side with them. He said that they even came right out and said they were the Nephilim. They, they came right out and said, said that, uh, you know, basically we're preparing for an intergalactic war with God. And they believe that they're going to win. Where are they getting this? They're going to win from <laughs> And why are you not allowed to say the name of Jesus yeah, in these exactly. underground facilities? Watch this. Uh, huge uh, doors underground, and uh, I believe it's like a military base or something. But what could they be hiding in there? I mean, what else, right? The only thing that I've got issues with here is let's imagine that you are a government employee and you're working in one of these underground facilities. So you're going to tell me that this Nephilim or this giant is going to tell you that they're actively trying to plot a war against God. And because you signed an NDA, you're just going to be all cool about it. <laughs> that doesn't make much sense. I think uh, any human that saw that would realize quickly, oh, uh, scripture must be true. Here are these things claiming that they are fallen angels or whatever Nephilim are. And they're actively trying to fight against God, who they claim to have knowledge does exist. And they want to fight him. So if that wouldn't be proof enough right there that... All that stuff is real and you need to get away from there and get on the right side of things very very quickly it just doesn't add up to me guys you have to see this clip to believe it Roseanne Barr and Tucker Carlson are considering the possibility that society is being rung by the Nephilim yeah check this clip out and be sure to watch to the end the people who run our society consider themselves gods and that's Boy, why they're they not do. explaining they think they're more than human. Oh, obviously. Yeah, they. I. I go. They're not even human because humans care about their environment of and course. their neighbors, and humans uh, care about you know other people's children. Of course. And humans care about living things. Yes. But they don't do any of that. And he goes because they think they're more than human. Oh, I noticed. They That's think why they they're want to live royals. Forever. They think they're like royals in, in a rarefied sphere of DNA or something above us. Like, did they come from another planet? Uh, you know, when I you hear people talk, that. I can't either. But This is the podcast to speculate on it, though. Well, because some people, some people say, you know, a lot of religious people, they're into some deep rabbit holes of things. And I don't know. Anything. Well, you can see why they are, though. I mean, I speaking for myself, I have no idea what's going on. I don't know if this is the Nephilim, right? I was going to say, I, I don't know. I know. Here we go. That's what I said. No, no. I'm, what I, no, let <laughs> me just say, heard. I said, I don't know right. anything I about that stuff, okay? She I'm does. a very ordinary middle-aged <laughs> man who spent his life following politics and right. theology. But I do know that whatever's going on is very deep. Yeah. I've spent a, my whole life around politicians and seen decisions get made, interviewed people who run things, and what's happening now is qualitatively different so different that it's not in the same category at all no this is hurting people for the sake of hurting them this is lying for the sake of lying this is as the Power devil hates holy water sake. they hate the truth you tell the truth about anything it almost doesn't matter what it's about it doesn't have to be about the next election right That's it right. can just be about the about history for example mm -hmm. right. telling the truth about history why should that offend well, anybody that really pisses periods me where off. everyone's dead and we can't of course change the past so there's nothing really at stake for us now right you would think people would welcome open-minded historical inquiry to get closer to what actually happened in whatever period or in whatever event. They hate that. Yes. Well, what, what are you watching? You're watching someone who hates the truth because it's true. And there's no possible profit motive that is driving that. There's no political end that is driving that. They hate the truth because it's true. Now we're in the realm of theology. Royal bloodlines, the Nephilim, history being lied about. Guys, people are starting to get it. If you want more people to get it, you should check out Ancient Angels and send it to a friend because, guys, it's all about this. Love you guys. It's a little more evidence there pointing in the direction that maybe some of that stuff is true about those underground bunkers. I still don't believe it, but uh, it's interesting to see that that's being talked about by 
I mean, Tucker Carlson, I consider him the mainstream. He's outside of it technically because he's uh, got fired from Fox and all that, but I would still consider him to be relatively mainstream voice, especially with the audience that he draws in and stuff. And to hear him talking about something like that, it's uh, always fun. Anderson, as you said about having to fight to get access to see some of the images. So to the best of you can answer this question, have any of you seen something to, to lead you to believe stronger in the existence of something extraterrestrial. What I can tell you is that when uh, Congresswoman Luna and Congressman Burchett and I were at Eglin Air Force Base, there were you know, hours of frustrations where they didn't want to let us see a photograph taken by a pilot during a, uh, a test flight. When I saw the photograph, I can tell you it is, it is of nothing um, that, that I'm aware of existing in our uh, arsenal of assets and I've been I'm on the Armed Services Committee for seven years I'm not unfamiliar with uh, the things that that we have at our disposal it was not something that I could classify as something that we would possess or a capability that any of our adversaries possess this clip kind of pisses me off because our elected officials have to fight to see photos of craft that they're then lied to and told those don't belong to us. This is some alien craft. Not only are we being lied to, but the people that we elect to run our country are being lied to and kept in the dark about this stuff. It's just extremely frustrating to see the stuff like this because then it almost makes you blackpilled and, and makes you feel like, you know, nothing's ever going to get better. There'll be no improvement on anything. We'll never get the truth on anything. But I don't believe that. I believe that we will. I think it's going to take people digging and people searching for the truth and and eventually things will start coming out well, that's the end of this video i'm going to go ahead and call it quits there i hope everyone had a wonderful christmas i hope you all got the gifts that you wanted i hope you enjoy your christmas dinner enjoy time with your families and i will see you here for the next video i'll see you tomorrow